different circuits, very simple circuits to kind of illustrate some aspects on node and mesh solutions. Um, what I want to start with is a very, very simple circuit at the top, which just basically looks like I've got three, effectively three voltage sources, a two volt, a four volt, and a zero volt, which is ground. And all of them are tied to the same three resistors types. So 20K, 20K, and 20K. And then I'll talk about the second circuit below, uh, which is now basically going to have two volts and minus two volts and a bunch of 10K ohm resistors to kind of give a sense of like how you would put this together. And part of what we want to do is to say there's some basic rules in terms of setting up these circuits. So if I have elements and node dependent sources, it usually becomes straightforward that one of the first things I'll ask is I'll say, well, if I have a particular voltage node that I'm solving for, this one has only one. So I get really simple matrices that have one value in it. Um, then I'm going to basically ask, well, what are all the resistors connected to it? And add all those together, and that gives me basically, but these are not resistances. I'm going to want to do conductances here. I'm going to want to tie that to multiply that uh, to the voltage to get some representation of current. The current is effectively the Norton equivalent of the voltages. So two volts with this, four volts with this, technically zero volts with that, but zero doesn't exist, so it doesn't really matter. And in fact, that's why anything on, on ground basically has sort of a, its own reference as you worked with this. And so this is, you'd set up, then you have the two Norton equivalent currents, basically the voltage over the current source, voltage over the current source. And it works out well. And if you're familiar with Norton and, and, and Devon and equivalents, you at this point can go, yeah, these are very um, re much related. Um, you can actually see how that, how that circuit would get built here. It turns out the solution to this circuit for voltages is that V out is equal to two volts. Interesting enough, one way to think about this is that if I have three resistors and three voltages, I'm effectively taking the average of the three voltages. So if I have two volts, zero volts, and four volts, the average of those three quantities is two. So it turns out I have two volts here. Interestingly enough, that means there's no current in this node at all. All of the current effectively is going to be flowing down this line. Interesting when you start to do a do a mesh solution, which is, of course, now I'm asking what happens with currents, and I'm going to just do them clockwise. Clockwise doing a current clock going this way, clock going this way. And so in the clockwise loop, what I'm going to be asking is, well, what are the resistors that are in that loop? And then that are in that particular loop. In this case, there's 220K. In the second one, there's 220K, so I get 240s. And then I get minus what's shared in between. In this case, it's going to be 20K in, in both of these cases. So what am I going to see here? And then I'm going to say, well, how does the voltage source go? Well, the one voltage source is proper for two volts. The other one is going in the opposite direction of the current that I expect going from plus to minus. So there's a minus four there. And then if I actually end up solving it for the currents, one thing I find very quickly is that, oh, right, uh, I actually do find that that J1, the loop that's coming in this direction, is zero. The loop in this direction here is actually minus one, which really means it's 1.1 milliamp in the other direction, which if I take this away and I realize I have 2K, 20K ohm resistors in series, it's exactly the solution I would expect. So that's great. So everything kind of intuitively works out. So we're in really good shape there. Um, take a, a slightly more interesting circuit here at the bottom where it's two volts here and minus two volts and a bunch of 10k ohm resistors. Now I can set, now one of the first things I'm going to notice is that since it's two volts, it's minus two volts, the lower node is ground. This voltage here is probably going to be somewhere in between two volts and minus two volts and this one's going to be somewhere between it, although this one's likely higher than this one. That would be what we would expect just looking at this sort of sort of just balancing the energy as we're looking at the system. So what's interesting about it is you say, okay, let me create create the nodes here. And I go, well, I've got three 10K ohm resistors. That's three over 10K. Again, I'm thinking of them as conductances now. The same thing for the second node, E2, is going to be three over 10K ohm. And then what's in between? Well, it's just one resistor in between them. That's going to be minus 10K ohm and minus 10K ohm. And so then I have that equaling to the, the Norton equivalent circuit. So it's two volts over 10K ohm and minus two volts over 10K ohm. 
cool. And then if you solve this, what you find is that the two voltages are 0.5 and minus 0.5 volts here and here. Basically, you take this structure, just invert, invert the matrix or solve the linear equations and off you go. Okay. So in this case, we're in pretty good shape. So then you kind of go, well, I could also do this for loops, which is then saying, well, how many resistors are in the loop and how many then are in common between the two loops? One thing to notice, I've got a loop one and a loop three here. There's nothing in between, so that's why I've got zeros. Um, given that there's no dependent sources, these matrices should be symmetric, so everything should work fine. And what's in between the loop one and loop two is one 10K, and what's in between loop two and two three is a 10K. And I've got base two resistors, three resistors, two resistors, so it's a two, a three, and a two. And it turns out the voltages play in the right direction. Two volts here is minus two volts, but it's actually, that means the signs are flipped, so it's actually going the right direction for the current. And what I end up finding is, I can find that I'm getting a current this way, a current this way, and a current this way that solves out as a result. So it turns out that you can actually get very comfortable with these kinds of loop and mesh analysis. The primary reason you're still using doing these is to get intuition or this, you know, just generally how concepts and circuits work as well as how you might do this if you're building computerized systems. A lot of times you're not usually sitting there writing matrices, but the intuition around this turns out to be extremely valuable and this is one thing to definitely focus on.